Hello folks, today we're going to talk about my latest um, project. This is for my little machine shop mini mill that I bought six or seven months ago now, maybe even eight. This is a tachometer display that I bought from McPod online. I did not make this piece, it came all pre-assembled. All the uh, soldering work and everything came complete as you essentially see it here. The only thing I added was these nuts and screws that you can see in the four corners. The idea is that this can be added to the uh, number of the mini mills and uh, gives you a tachometer readout. The kit comes with the assembled board, a jumper that goes between the back of the supply board here and ties into the control system of the mill at the other end as well as two other optional jumpers if you wish to add a reversing switch it has this optional three wire jumper and the two wire jumper is also used to an optional again used to replace the fault LED which is on the control panel of the comes uh, installed on the control panel of the mill and if you install this jumper it will uh, replace that LED and indicate a fault indication here if you go in an overload condition on the mill or something similar. My intention is not initially anyway to install these two items but I will obviously install this and this jumper to the um, control system of the mill. Now to install it, there's a couple of options. One is to um, do some cutting on the control box of the mill itself and install this through the faceplate of the, of the mill, which I'm not going to do. Instead, what I chose to do is make my own little box like this. This is it, actually. There's the front, so the, the uh, display will peek through like that. From the inside and it and it fits just comfortably into the inside you I don't know if you can see here but let me get this in frame for you I've epoxied four 440 nuts on the inside of the box I think you can see those okay I made this box out of plastic that I obtained from clipboards and these are I bought two and they come in a two-pack but two cheap uh, plastic glossy clipboards and one of them I started to cut apart and lay out the the size that I wanted uh, I wanted it just big enough to hold this display I didn't really want it any larger I want to keep the form factor quite small so I laid it out on this uh, one of the two clipboards you can see where I cut it off on the table saw <clears throat> this just happened to be blue painters tape by the way <clears throat> on both sides to keep it from marring when I run it through the table saw. I measured the uh, circuit board and then I made the box just comfortably big enough to hold it. These uh, nuts and washers here will go through, or actually the, the screws will go through and in, into the nuts here. These nuts are simply spacers, as all those are. That gives me the, the exact spacing that I want on the inside as it threads into the screw, threads into this nut here. And that allow the display to just peek out through this, this hole I cut in here. It was a glossy plastic. I think it's a type of acrylic. I'm not sure, but it, 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 it performs like an acrylic. A lot of people call that... Uh, uh, by a no, number of trade names, uh, but acrylic is actually what it is, I think. And uh, so I just dulled it up with some, uh, well, first I squared it up on my faceplate to make sure all the joints are nice and clean. This cut out here, that notch, that slit is for this cabling to pass through. So obviously I'm going to have to detach the connector from the cable, pass it through, and then reconnect it, which is uh, very easy for me to do. I've got a little bit of experience with electronics and that, that won't be a problem. So that's simply a pass-through that I cut with my um, a little slitting saw in my Dremel. And obviously the back will go on something like, like that. 
with some countersunk flathead screws that will hold it in place, and then this will attach eventually with a magnetic strip to the control system of the of a plate above the control system of the mill. And I'll show those uh, those steps a little later in how I installed it. Uh, the box was very easy to make. I didn't uh, feel it necessary to make a video of creating the box because there's plenty of quality videos out on YouTube uh, demonstrating how to make an acrylic or a plastic box. They're all over the place and it, it wasn't hard to do. Again, I cut it on the pieces out on the table saw and then I used uh, a glue and uh, cement by capillary action and then I squared it up on my surface plate and uh, it came out f just fine. So the next thing I'll show you is uh, the setup or installation on the mini mill. Well, here's the basic installation. Here's the box that I talked about a little earlier. The magnetic strip is, is attached to the back with two-sided tape, which allows this box to be attached by a magnet, as you can see here, which will allow it to be removed. Uh, I cut a slot in the top of the control box right where my finger is with a Dremel, a little about an eighth of an inch wide or so, so I could feed the ribbon cable through. I did disconnect or remove the ribbon cable from the connector uh, so I didn't have to make that slot any wider than necessary and then reconnected it inside and once I had the cable inside. There are two uh, criteria that I was really uh, pursuing when I decided how to mount this. One is I, I wanted to minimize modifications to the control board, the control box rather. I wasn't really interested in cutting a, a hole here and mounting the uh, the uh, the board for the tachometer into the faceplate, which some people do and it looks very nice. I just didn't want to modify this any more than necessary. And I wanted to make it removable, which it is, and I wanted to make it easy. And that's why I chose to go with a plastic box. The only real modification to the mill itself is just cutting this slot here and feeding the ribbon cable through. Other than that, this is re completely removable and I could just unplug it here and uh, re remove the plastic connector. I could pull that out and seal that slot back up where I pulled the ribbon cable through and it'd be back as stock. Let's get a little bit uh, better perspective here of what's going on inside the box. Here you can see where the flat ribbon cable attaches to the motherboard for the mill itself. This obviously came with a mill and the designer of the um, McPod tachometer did a very nice job of making this a nice clean process. So essentially I just unplugged the connector here that is intended to drive the external port and the external port on the back if you want to use a plug-in style, which would have been a little bit more involved. Frankly, I did consider that. But I just unplugged the external port, plugged his cable in, and we're in business. Nice and clean. The other benefit of this approach, at least what I thought was a benefit versus mounting the tachometer in the front faceplate, is it gets it up and out of the way a bit uh, of oil and I, I wasn't real interested in creating a faceplate to cover this so by doing it this way I could tuck it up out of the way, I can remove it if I need to and uh, I think it's going to be a nice clean uh, installation. So there's a view of the completed project. <clears throat> you see the tachometers lit up. Watch what happens here as I add a little power to the mill. And you'll see that increment as the mill starts to turn. You can hear the mill running, I think, in the background. It is maxed out. 
about just short of 2,500 RPM. Nice, clean, simple installation, and I think it'll work out real well for my mini mill. My intention is to do more videos related to the mill when I get a chance. Uh, I think I'd indicated before, I've had it about six or seven months now. I've got a fair amount of time on it, and i um, got some projects in mind that I like to post videos for. So, as usual, thanks for watching.